um, the church asked him to be bishop of Alaska, um, of which he accepted uh, with the blessing of his children. Uh, he went to ask his children if they would bless him to become bishop, and his children blessed him, and so he accepted to become bishop of Alaska. Um, and his name was changed to Innocent, and so he was Bishop Innocent. Bishop Innocent was an incredible man. He was, as we would say, he was sort of a Davy Crockett, Daniel Boone, Lewis and Clark kind of person. Um, who was an incredible missionary who came to Alaska and nothing deterred him from uh, increasing and bringing the faith. He would, uh, harsh, harsh conditions compared to our standards. Now he would go and he would travel uh, in sea kayaks from village to village along the islands. Um, by himself, uh, he would ride the backs of reindeer, he'd ride on sleds to get to villages. Uh, so he was an incredible missionary. He was an incredible um, uh, artist in the sense of he was a woodworker. He was a clockmaker. The original clock of the cathedral here was built by him. Uh, and we were able to save some of the inner workings of the clock from the fire, which is still downstairs in the furnace room. Um, and so he built that clock with all the the ironwork um, uh, wheels and everything. Um, if you've been to the bishop's house, uh, you've seen his his bedroom. You've seen his desk that he made, incredible intricate desk. This uh, stool here, uh, he hand tooled um, uh, for uh, himself. This is called a cathedra, uh, where we get the name cathedral. Uh, cathedra means throne. And this is the bishop's cathedral. Um, and so with, with uh, Bishop Innocent, uh, he designed this. He architecturally designed the cathedral. The original one burned down. And this is the reproduction. And this is the exact same cathedral that was here before the fire. The original one was made of uh, Sitka spruce. And that's one of the reasons why it went up so quickly because it was all it was all wood. Um, when they rebuilt this, uh, they rebuilt it with uh, concrete reinforcing rebar, and so it's it's fireproof. But the design uh, and everything in here is the exact same cathedral, um, and he designed it. And when they when they went to rebuild this after the fire. Um, they were able to find Bishop Innocent's uh, architectural drawings mm -hmm. that were in the, in the National Archives mm -hmm. in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. And so they were able to bring them from D.C. here, and they used those as the blueprint for rebuilding this, even to the point of the wall covering, which was the wall covering of the time, which is sailcloth. Mm -hmm. uh, and sailcloth was used as uh, one for acoustics, as well as for retaining um, and for um, a covering that was used in fancy homes, you might say. Um, Russian. Um, each country has a usually a distinct type of cross that represents Christianity, and the three bar is Russian. The, the bar on the top represents the, the plaque that was put above his head. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. The cross, the slanted cross on the bottom represented uh, the footplate that he was nailed to. His feet weren't nailed directly to the cross, but to a footplate on the cross. And it's tilted to be able to uh, signify the two thieves who are crucified next to him. The one on the right and the one on the left. The one on the right that day was saying to him, Dear Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Uh, and the Lord said to him, today you will be with me in paradise. The one on the left was shaking his fist at the Lord and saying, why don't you do something? If you're, if you're king of the Jews, why don't you get us down from here? And so the slant that this represents that the, the thief on the right went to paradise with the Lord, and the one on the left went to perdition that day. And so that's, that's the basic description of the 
Russian Orthodox cross. <laughs> the cross that's over here. Uh, Abraham Lincoln was, a, I believe, he was a Congregationalist, and he would go to church every Sunday. And when he came in, while he was president, he would he would be in the back pew area, but he would never sit down in church. He would always stand up. And of course, if he stood up, that meant that none of his staffers could sit down. That they had to, they had to stand up too. And so they were saying, uh, "Mr. President, please, would you like to sit down?" No, I'm, I'm fine. Uh, please, Mr. President, everyone else is sitting down. Could you sit down? And he, he refused to sit down. And this went on and on. And finally, they asked him, "Said, sir, why, why won't you sit down?" Um, and he gave him this answer, and he said, well, if, if I, as the commander-in-chief of my men, if I go out to review my troops, and my men stand at attention for me, while well, I review them as their commander-in-chief, shouldn't I, when I go into the house of my commander-in-chief, stand at attention for him? <coughs> Again, wow. That, that's a good answer. Wow. Yeah. Here we have the Russian cross. Top, bottom, and slanted like the good the father was talking about in his video.